Hi everyone, in this video tutorial I'll show you how to create a pop-up by using Royal Elementor add-ons. By using this extension we can create email subscription pop-ups, promotion sales, countdown pop-ups and many more. Pop-ups could be displayed on page load, on page scroll, when visitor decides to leave the page or when a user clicks on a button. Basically it comes with all kinds of features you might need to create a pop-up. So let's see a few demo pop-ups and it will give you a basic idea of what's possible by using this extension. Here you can see a full screen pop-up, a model window, slide in pop-up, pop-up that comes from either top or bottom when pushes the content up or down, yes or no pop-up that could be used for age verification for example, and finally some cookies notice. As you can see, there are no limits of what you can do when building a pop-up. Alright, for this tutorial, I have already set up some demo WordPress site. And to create a pop-up, we need to go to the WordPress dashboard and in Royal Addons, click on Pop-ups. Of course, we don't have any pop-up yet, so to start creating one, let's click on Create Template. Let's give it a name. I'm gonna call it My New Pop-up and click on Create Template. Next, we need to choose where we want to display our template. So click on Add Conditions. And since we are using a free version of Royal Addons, we can only choose entire site. But don't worry, in the second part of this tutorial, I'll show you all the features that comes with Pro version. Save Conditions and it will take us to the pop-up editor. This is the window where we're gonna build our pop-up and on the left side we have some settings panel and from here we can customize it or add some widgets. And as you can see, we can add any element or widget that's available in our elements list. Anytime you want to go back to the pop-up settings, just click here. This is where we edit pop-up settings or change some styles. Before we start building our pop-up, I want to show you one more great feature that comes with Royal Addons, and it's called Pop-ups Library. So if you click here, it will take you to this library of ready-made pop-ups that you can directly import with just one click. Choose the one you like, click on it to preview and finally you can click on insert. But I'm not gonna do this this time, cause in this tutorial I want to show you how to actually build one from scratch. Alright, it's time to start building our pop-up and I'm gonna do it very quickly. So let's choose the structure, go to widgets list, I'm gonna drag and drop some image and choose the one from the media library. Next I want to add some text to our pop-up. So again, drag and drop it from widgets list. Let me copy some text, change its alignment, maybe change its tag and text size as well. Finally, set the font weight to bold. I'm gonna add another text widget. Again, copy some text. Let me very quickly change its style. This time I'll make it smaller and change the color to gray. And finally, let's add MailChimp subscription widget. Let's make it rid of its label and basically that's it. We just built our first subscription pop-up window. And as I already said, instead of MailChimp subscription, you can use any other elemental widget according to your needs. For example, let me quickly add some countdown to our pop-up. You can use it if you have some kind of sale or maybe an upcoming event, so you get the idea. Let's go back to the pop-up settings and the first option we have is to choose how the pop-up opens up. In a free version there's only one option and that's on page load. And as I've already mentioned, in the second part of the video I'll show you all the pro features, but for now let's stick with on page load. Next setting is to choose the time of the delay between the page load and pop-up display. If you want to display your pop-up again to your visitors, once they close it, you have a few options to choose from in show again delay. Otherwise, leave it to no delay. In layout section, we can choose how we want our pop-up to be displayed. We want it to be a model pop-up or top bar pop-up. Model pop-up is a default option for all pop-ups except top bottom bar. So if you want your pop-up to come from top or bottom and push the content of the page up or down, set it to top bar banner, otherwise leave it to model pop-up. 
Let's quickly check some other layout settings. Of course, we can change its background width. We can also choose between pixels and persons. We can leave the height to auto or set it to uh, custom. And again, we can choose between pixels or viewport height. Let me go back to pixels. Here we have all kinds of alignment options that you can play with. Horizontal, vertical and content alignment. Now there are tons of entrance animations that you can choose from. Default one is fade in, but there's also other options of fading as well as categories like zooming, bouncing, sliding, and etc. So go ahead and play with it. You can also change animation duration. And finally, that index is what determines that your pop-up will always stay on top of other elements of your page. We don't want our pop-up to be overlaid by other elements like sticky navigation or something like that. So always make sure that it is set to a very high number. If you want your pages not to be scrollable when pop-up is displayed, you can simply activate this option. Let's move on to the next section which is overlay and here we can choose if we want the overlay or not. And there's also an option to prevent closing of the pop-up when someone clicks on the overlay. So if you set it to yes, then the only option to close it will be to click on this close icon. Speaking of which, we have some settings to change the behavior of our closing button. First of all, we can choose if we want to display it or not. There's also an option to delay its show up. So in this case, it will show up after 5 seconds, since pop-up itself is displayed. And finally, we can choose the position of the close button by changing its vertical or horizontal position. Let's move on to style section where we can change the background type of our pop-up. Change the color or add an image as a background. There's also an option to change the color of the scroll bar, which is not visible right now. And of course, we have things like padding and border radius as well as border type and box shadow. Again, in overlay, we can change its color or set the image as a background. And finally, we can style our close button from here. Choose a different color for normal or hover state, change its size, and there's also some other settings if you want to make it look like a box, so feel free to play with them. Now, I want to show you one really important feature related to pop-ups and it's called a pop-up trigger. So let's go to the widgets list, search for pop-up trigger and drag and drop it into our pop-up. Now, this could be a really handy if you want to add some button to your pop-up which will trigger some kind of action. For example, it can close the pop-up, close it permanently or go back to referrer when someone clicks on it. And I'll show you in a moment what it means. But first, let's see how close pop-up action works. It works almost identical to close button, but has some additional settings like show again delay or direct to a specific URL when closed. So here we can paste some URL, change the button text, choose the position, and now if someone clicks on this button, it will redirect them to the URL which we've just specified. So let me open up our site in a new browser window and now if I click on the trigger button it will close the pop-up and take us to the about us page. Close permanently option will close the pop-up well permanently and in this case show again delay option won't be available anymore. Go back to the referrer is a very interesting feature. What it does is after it's clicked it will take your visitors to the page or website from where they landed on your website. So let's quickly see how it works. Update the page. And first let me open some website, WP Royal for example. And from here I will go to my website where we have the pop-up. And now if I click on the trigger button, it will take me back to the referee site and this could be useful in many scenarios. All right, in this part of the tutorial, I'll go through all the features that come with Pro version. I have already activated the Pro and as you can see in open pop-up for example premium options that were not available before are now available but before i review those options let me very quickly show you some other settings that we have at our hands 
Stop showing after date is a great option if you want your pop-ups to be automatically disabled after a certain date or time. This will be very helpful if we have some kind of promotion or sale that ends at certain date of the month. Now, if you really want to annoy your users, you can set automatic closing delay on 10 seconds, for example, and they won't be able to close it for entire 10 seconds. But personally, I would not recommend it. If you want to prevent closing your pop-up when someone presses on escape key on their keyboard, set this option to active. Another great feature that comes with Pro is to show pop-up based on user roles. For example, maybe you want to show the pop-up to only guests or subscribers, and you can add multiple roles as well. If activated, show according to URL keyword will display the pop-up only if the page URL contains some specific keyword, which we can enter here, and pop-up won't be displayed until the URL contains this word. So let me enter some keyword. Update the page, go to the site, and as you can see the pop-up won't show up on the page, because URL does not contain the keyword we specified in our settings. So let me add the keyword right after the domain name, and now the pop-up shows up. So here my keyword is the one we've specified, and this ref is just a parameter and it could be anything. Just make sure that it is followed by equal sign. Show on this device is another great feature which can be used if you don't want your pop-up to be displayed on specific devices. For example, let's set the device on mobile and deactivate it. And from now on, pop-up won't be visible on screen sizes less than 360 pixels. It's finally time to see all the open pop-up options and I would like to start from custom trigger. If you want your pop-up to be displayed when someone clicks on a certain element of the page, like a button for example, we need to add a CSS ID to this element, or button in our case. And to do so, let's go back to the site, and this is the button that will open the pop-up. So let's edit the header, click on the button, and in button ID, let me paste some ID, Keep in mind that you have to write it without the hash symbol, update the header, go back to the dashboard, and open the pop-up editor again. Now in element selector we have to enter same ID we've applied to our button, which was test ID. But as you can see this time we have to include the hash symbol as well. Update the pop-up, go to the site, and now if we click on the button, it will display the pop-up. Let's continue exploring open pop-up options and the next one is after user exit intent. Again, let's go to the site and this option triggers the pop-up display whenever site visitor decides to leave the page or more specifically, mouse cursor goes out of the page window. Next is after user inactivity. And this option will trigger the pop-up display if the page visitor is inactive for some time, like 50 seconds for example. And this could be helpful if you want to remind your users that they have some actions to complete. If you set after specific date, pop-up will only show up after the date and time you specify here, and it won't be visible before. On scroll to element works like custom trigger, but in this case, instead of clicking on some element of the page, it will show the pop-up when certain section or element is visible in the browser window. And once again, we need to enter some ID of the section or element. So let's go back to the site. Let me scroll down a little bit and maybe I want my pop-up to show up whenever a visitor scrolls to the heading element. To do so, let's edit the page. Scroll to that element. And let's apply some ID just like we did it for the pop-up button. So let me type some ID, again without hash symbol, update the page and go back to the pop-up editor. In element selector, let's enter the same ID we've applied to the heading. Please don't forget the hash symbol. And now if we visit the site and scroll down to that element, the pop-up will show up as soon as the element is within our viewport. All right. 
The very last option that I want to show you is on page scroll, which is similar to on scroll to element, which we've just reviewed. But in this case, we can only specify the percentage number, a 30 for example, and now whenever someone scrolls the 30% of the page length, the pop up will automatically be displayed. And of course, we already know how on page load works. By this time, there are all the features that come as Pro, but in the future, you can expect many more features, options, and settings to be added to this plugin. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please go to royalelementaradins.com where you can get help from our support forum, download the plugin, or upgrade to Pro. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon in the next one.